Coming up next on Jewish Voice, prophecy expert Paul McGuire issues a warning and a message of hope in the midst of global economic chaos. The world system may be broke, but God is not broke, and Yeshua doesn't have a cash flow problem. political and financial health of America, as well as other nations, has been growing more and more critical. Despite promises from our administration that things are improving, our guest brings us the true picture, here to prepare you for what is likely ahead and what we can do about it as the author of The Day the Dollar Died. Please welcome Mr. Paul McGuire. Paul. Welcome back to Jewish Jonathan, Voice. How are you? Good to have you. Good. Come on, have a seat. Well, let's dig right in. Uh, I think the economy is on everybody's mind right now, and uh, we've had some changes since the last time you were here. We have a Republican uh, majority in the House of Representatives. Wall Street uh, purportedly is being watched more. Uh, Detroit's paid back some of its debts after this massive. Uh, uh, government uh, bailout. Uh, so all looks like we may be in for a complete recovery. That's what the White House is telling us. What's the truth? The truth is uh, that we are not in for a complete recovery. Uh, the truth is, sadly to say, we are uh, looking at a very severe downturn because the economic stimulus, uh, by any economist's measurement, cannot produce an economic recovery. It's doing the exact opposite. But Paul, when you were on last or shortly thereafter, everyone was, was worried about a depression. Well, we've seemed to avoid a depression. So what well, do you say about that? Well, well excellent question, Jonathan. Um, the Federal Reserve is monetizing the debt, which, as you know, is a fancy word for printing more dollars than there actually are. So, for example, if you're monetizing the debt, you simply have a printing press and you print more dollars. Let's say I owe you a thousand bucks, but I only got a dollar in my wallet. But I go back into the back room with my computer color printer and I print out 900 plus dollars and I pay you back in that money. Well, have I really paid you? Uh, I don't know, and that's exactly what the... <laughs> exactly right. I'm trying to figure all this out myself. Right. The difference is it would be counterfeiting. The government is legally printing more and more money. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, it, it has to catch up at some point. I mean, if you take a, a, a family or a business that keeps getting more and more into debt and borrowing more and more money to pay off debt and the debt gets deeper, eventually there's going to be collapse. How, how is it that we've avoided that uh, here in America? Well, um, without being facetious, we have avoided economic collapse through hot air. We have uh, a corporate-controlled media, which is speaking in unison, and I've debated some of the world's greatest economists on major cable news network uh, shows that you would know the names of, and they are reassuring the public that everything's okay. But everything cannot be okay. Let, let's give an example. You were talking about uh, the economic recovery. Let's talk about a particular very large automobile manufacturer, one of the biggest uh, automobile uh, manufacturers in the world. Well, they were bailed out with our tax dollars, but what you don't hear is that the vast majority of cars that they sell and manufacture are not being sold or bought or made in the United States. They're being made far, far away from the United States of America. So Americans don't have the jobs, and we don't have the money. So who's buying the cars? And how are they paying back the government? China's buying the cars. <laughs> and our government is, uh, has a very convenient deal. Uh, they print money for, let, let's just get down to it. The Federal Reserve uh, prints money from nothing. 
This is a really important concept to understand. It, it's actually hard to understand because it's so simple. They print money from nothing, and they pay, pay back the Chinese with dollars from nothing. In fact, it got so bad that the, the very higher up people in the Chinese government were angry and said to our Federal Reserve, stop printing money because we don't want a, 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 a bag filled with hundred dollar bills that's only wor worth 50 cents. Paul, we haven't, it, it doesn't seem though that we've seen the resulting hyperinflation that would logically come about as a result of continuing to print money. It would devalue the currency. It doesn't seem that we've seen it. Have we or haven't we seen uh, this inflation? I, I think you're right. I think uh, we haven't fully seen uh, w what could happen. And when I say what could happen is because God is in control of the economy. And, you know, uh, uh, the world system may be broke, but God is not broke. And Yeshua doesn't have a cash flow problem. So we, we have to understand that. But So we're, we're walking a tightrope. Now, Inflation occurs when you print more dollars than you actually have. So to answer your question, when we go back to Germany, uh, the Third Reich, Adolf Hitler, all that stuff, they would go to the bakery with a, wor uh, a wheelbarrow filled with uh, German marks to buy a loaf, loaf of, of bread. bread. That's hyperinflation. No, it hasn't gotten that bad yet. But you see, the problem is we have not fixed any of these systemic problems that fixing economies. For example, what does America manufacture? I'm not sure anymore, to tell you the truth. I don't think anybody's sure anymore. We don't manu... How can you have a vi... This is basic economics, which you won't learn in school. <laughs> but how can you have a viable economy when you make nothing? The only thing we do in, make, uh, in America is we shuffle paper and sue each other. <laughs> That's all we do. Paul, when we talking about production, mm -hmm. we, we immediately think of China because yes. so much is now produced in China. Mm -hmm. So much of the world's products, let alone yes. what's coming to America, is produced in China. And we're also hearing a lot about China's uh, uh, ownership uh, of, m of, much of many of the U.S. assets, much yes. of, the, of, of U.S. land and so on. And uh, they're holding this debt that they can call in. Can you talk about that at all so we understand it better? Yeah, Jonathan, that's a very, very important question. The so-called Chinese miracle of economic recovery is, is not a miracle. The globalists, the, the, the world's leading bankers and financiers decided in the 1940s that they were going to make China one of the world's greatest economic powers. So around, wait, wait, wait. The yeah. 40s? Yes. Anybody know that? The 40s? Yes. This was all predetermined? Yes. Yes. So back then, Rockefeller looked at China, and this was after Chairman Mao had slaughtered approximately 60 million people, and he looked at China and said, that's the ideal government. We have total control of the masses, but we would like to have the American uh, productivity. So we want to merge uh, China with America. So Kissinger, at around this time, and other members of an organization called the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, George, uh, George Bush Sr., visited China, and they began to make deals and say, we're going to build up your industry. We're going to build up all your manufacturing. We're, we're going to the 70s now, correct? Ex excuse me, the 70s, yes. But the plan was laid in the 40s. Okay. The plan was laid towards the end, in the latter days of World War II. Now... In the 70s, Kissinger and uh, others made deals with China to build up its manufacturing base. So from the 70s on, everything's made in China. You can go to any retail store, toy store, you name it. Uh, whatever you're wearing, unless you have a, a fabulous clothing bu uh, budget, it's made in China. I mean, everything's made in China. Your right. toothbrush is made in China. Right. So how can Americans be employed? One of the, the most basic fundamental principles of economics is 
You have to have a manufacturing base. God forbid that the United States of America should enter a war right now because we don't manufacture the steel, the, 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 the military parts for any machinery. Which we did in World War II, which was why we had such great success. Co correct. We would have to ask China, China, would you please give us the uh, missiles off the assembly line so we can fight a war. That's insanity. The U.S. missiles. Yes, U.S. Right. missiles. Right. And, and uh, unless we're at war with China, of course. So right. what, about, what about our indebtedness to China and how this plays into everything? Well, the, 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 the Chinese love this because they are buying up American corporations left and right. They're buying massive acreage in cities. Mm -hmm. uh, they own huge pieces of land. China is making a fortune. But the, the bigger part of the deal, and I don't know if you want to get into it now or a little bit later, has to do with the relationship between China, the United States, Bible prophecy, and oil. Shoot, because that was my next question. Okay. Oil was my next question. The okay. Middle East unrest in oil. So tie it all together okay. for us. Okay, so oil, uh, excuse me, the dollar is worth nothing. That's why I wrote the book called The Day the Dollar Died. Aren't you glad we have such encouraging guests on Jewish <laughs> Voice? But you know what? We're here to tell the truth. That is, yes, we're here right. to, to make you understand, to help you understand what's really going on. And Keep I want to say one thing. God has a covenant with his people, just like he had a covenant with the Jewish people. He has a covenant with his people today. God promises to meet the, your needs in whatever environment. The Bible says, David says, I've never seen the righteous go hungry. Uh, as long as they sought the Lord, they continued to prosper. Mm -hmm. So in any economic environment, those people who seek the Lord God, the biblical God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yeshua, will be provided for. Very important. There's the good news. Yeah. That's, that's the good news. The, there's good news. Okay. Yeah. Now, all right, so oil. Oil essentially is the new global currency. Although they have a name for the global currency, they've announced that the dollar is no longer going to be the global currency. They're thinking of using the name Bancor. It'll be a combination of competing currencies. The Bancor? The Bancor. It was, uh, it was a term. B-A-N-K? B-A-N-C-O-R. You get a big bang for your bank core. <laughs> yeah. You get a okay. big bang for your bank core, right. <laughs> and Keynes, the economist, who, who was the brilliant economist. Now, now listen to this. His economic philosophy could, could be summed up with the words. This is an exact quote from Keynes. Spend your way to prosperity. Now, how many of you have tried to spend your way into prosperity? I'm not well, raising my hand. <laughs> no, you spend your way into credit card debt. Okay, so um, he developed the concept. Well, since the dollar is worth nothing, I mean, it's worth something, but just on paper, um, oil could become the world's currency. What's happening in, in the Middle East now is very dangerous because all of these nations like Libya and Egypt and uh, so many of the other nations are having revolutions. It makes the entire, and they also are in control of the world's oil. Russia is one of the greatest producers of oil in the world. Europe gets all its oil from... Most people don't know that, by no, the way. No, they don't. Because they've been very poor at, 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 at extracting the oil over the, at least yes. during the communist era. Yes, but they are the, probably the number two producer of oil in the world. They, they, ha they have a monopoly on the world's oil. Now... China gets all of its oil, made a deal with Russia, and China gets all of its oil from Russia. So if things go bad in the Middle East, let's say an Ezekiel 38 scenario uh, plays out, a war of Gog and Magog where Russia and Iran and an alliance of Middle Eastern nations invade Israel in the last days where God supernaturally destroys the enemies of Israel, if there's an oil crisis... America will have an economic meltdown because we don't have oil. We, we get it currently from the Middle East. Russia will sell, continue to sell oil to uh, China. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is that in America today, in America, we currently own, under our geographic territory, the largest oil supplies of any nation on planet Earth. 
America currently has enough oil supplies. Including, including Russian, including Saudi Arabian. Correct. We have larger oil supplies than Russia and Saudi Arabia combined. Number two is we have so much oil in the U.S. alone that we could sustain our oil needs something to like the year 2041. So, but it's being hidden. That's why we don't allow offshore drilling. The, the, the hidden by who, Paul? Hidden by a global elite that are, use, that are using a, the manufactured crisis of oil to destroy the value of the dollar in order to equalize the dollar with other currencies and create a one-world currency and a one-world government. Paul, do you see any connection between this in a conspiracy? It is a conspiracy. Yes. And the fact that we haven't had a refinery built in the United States in the last 32 years? Yes, an abso oil refinery. absolutely, Jonathan. We, we, do, we do not allow offshore drilling. And yet we have oil on the Alaskan coastline and all kinds of coastlines. We have tremendous, we do not, there are oils, uh, there, there are oil that could be pumped all over the United States, but we forbid it. Why? Because the price of oil is, be, be, who are the international bankers? The international bankers, their primary asset besides gold is oil. They manipulate the price of oil to artificially devalue the dollar so that then the dollar becomes worth so little that America will then be willing to become part of a global government, a global equalization. That's their goal. And as you know, this fits completely in the Bible prophecy. Paula, I'm going to ask you a question now that's going to take us into very deep waters. Tie this, talk about our current administration and their policy on, sp on spending their way to, to, to wealth and if you see this tying into this conspiracy in one world government. Well, the first thing I want to say is... We have security here, by the way. Yeah, the first thing we can't I provide say, anything for anyone for you after you leave. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the first thing I want to say is this is not a conspiracy that's d democratic or republican. So this is not just the current administration. This is the administrations, both Democratic and Republican, before it. And in fact, the re Republicans are just as on board as the Democrats are. Now, the current economic stimulus, most of the leading economists that know that what they're talking about, not Keynes, who said, spend your way into prosperity, most of the leaders... Keynes being followed, by the way, in our current administration. Oh, yes. Keynes was yeah. followed... I get that impression, any of you? <laughs> Keynes was followed by uh, Bush Jr. He, he rang up the greatest debt in U.S. history. Spend your way to prosperity. Do you know why they created the concept of spend your way to prosperity? Because we have to borrow money from the inter international bankers, the Federal Reserve. If we're going to spend our way from prosperity, uh, we have to have money. Since we don't have enough money to spend our way to prosperity, we borrow it from the Federal Reserve that loans it to the U.S. government. After creating it out of nothing. After creating it out of nothing. Boy, I want to be part of that. Yeah, right. My goodness. Not really, but and so, crazy. And Just so crazy. here we are. Nothing, when, when you analyze the stimulus package, it has stimulated nothing. There has been no real growth in the economy since the stimulus began. Now, no offense, but I think a second grade kid in public school in America could probably figure out a way to raise our uh, gross national product by 10 cents annually versus the current administration's stimulus plan, which has raised the GNP zero. But don't you think you could do a better job? Uh, it seems to me I made it through second grade okay. <laughs> Paul, let, let, let's, let, let, let me move to, because we only have a few minutes mm -hmm. left, and I know you talk about this in your book, The Day the Dollar Died, but let's bring it to a micro level, mm -hmm. to the person watching. We talk, you talk about uh, the dollar really being 
valueless or yes. only of value on paper. Right. What about people that are watching that are very concerned ab about the economy? I have, or live on a fixed income, have uh, have been saving money for retirement, or maybe are retired, and want to know how this all works out for them. Of course, trust in God. But mm -hmm. talk about the pr just a few practical okay. uh, things that people can do to protect themselves. I deal with this in the book, The Day the Dollar Died, but, but the question you're asking, Jonathan, is so important. And I know you're hurting for the, for the countless people watching your program. I'm hurting for the countless people that are watching your program. We're all in this situation. <clears throat> our retirement, our pensions, our savings, our how, we're all hurting financially. And if we don't face it, and most of us are going to face it, our children are going to face it. So it's very painful, and there's a lot of people watching that are really hurting. And I don't mean this facetiously, but I want to say this. The Lord God is faithful and true. When the Messiah returns to Israel in Revelation 19, and He is returning to Jerusalem as a proof text that He has an everlasting covenant with <clears throat> David and the physical descendants of Abraham. Amen to that. It says, faithful and true. God is faithful and true to provide your financial needs. But in addition to that, it is God that gives wisdom. Now, I'm not going to run out and say buy gold or do this or do that. But I will say a few things. In the multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. There are godly counselors that can tell you how to invest your money or where not to invest. Don't just take one man's advice. In the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. Commit your way to the Lord, and then your ways will be established. Now, I'm not talking about prayers like we used to pray when, when times were good economically. Uh, and you sit down at McDonald's with your friends. God, bless this food in Jesus' name, amen. And you go for the Happy Meal real quick. Cry out to God. You know this, Jonathan. Cry out to God. When... when when it says cry out to God, cry out to God like a little baby cries out for, for its mother. Cry out to God because you'll find in your, in your moment of adversity and in your moment of trial, if you cry out to God. Can we, do we have time to pray for your Please, audience? Please, let's pray right now and for the, those watching right now. Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, we thank you that you are faithful. You are faithful. It says it from Absolutely. Genesis to Revelation. Yes, you Lord. are faithful and true. And you cannot tell a lie. And you've promised to meet the needs of your people. You, your economy is greater than this current economy. Your economy is greater than the world system. Lord God, we call unto you. And God Almighty, Yeshua, we ask in your mighty name that you would provide for your people. Provide funds. Provide money. Provide jobs. Yes, provide wisdom. Open doors where there are no yes, do doors. God, show them where to invest. Give them the job. Show them how to retrain themselves. Show them how to get the practical things taken care of, such as education and preparation. There are people that are going to lose their house unless you intervene, Lord. Yes, Lord. There are people that are going to lose their jobs. Lord, we agree. Intervene with the same power that resurrected Christ from the dead intervene and save their homes and provide food. We thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 And Paul, I, we're going to make the book available to uh, people that are watching the program. The day the dollar died, the men of Issachar understood the times they lived in and they were called wise. And, and so should you understand the times we live in because you will then be wise. Paul, thanks very much. Paul McGuire, everybody.